teaching and i don't know how many dads do this but i'm just throwing out how many dads out there either engage in healthy activities with a kid and how many dads engage about healthy eating and practices and nutrition practices with their kids What is up, everybody? It's Ed Gow Jr. of the Dad Central Show and Dad Central, and I am with the man in blue. That would be Drew Solon. The <laughs> man Central. in blue named Drew. And the, there we the go. The Dad Central Show. Hey, you <laughs> are you're in, good with the rhymes. You're yeah, good. the man in Drew, the man in blue named Drew. I just thought about that. There we I, go. Here's We're, my here's my question to you. Yes. Is it really blue? I don't or know. Is it just a different my, color. For those who are just uh, listening aqua? on the audio. Yeah, you won't be able to tell. But to that's the this. reason why to watch. Is it aqua? Turquoise? Turquoise? Well, you know who, who we'd have to ask? Under Armour. Their, what's oh. their color palette for this shirt? And okay. then we'd know for sure. But okay. in the interest of uh, honoring your color, the blue. We'll call it blue today. Okay, whatever. I can, what's, 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 what's up? What's up? How how's mobility these days with you, Drew? How's what? Mobility. Mobility. Yes. What does that mean? Oh, oh come on. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, whoa! I get it. Uh, it took me a while. I'm a little bit slow. So <laughs> no, what you're you, doing is a little shot. At no. The, old, the at at the guy who said on the last time we, we talked when we recorded and we apologize it's been a long time since ed and i've been together recording so it might take us a little while to get through this you know reconnect but you're talking about the fact that i said i was going back to playing baseball yes and i did go back to playing baseball yes. and sure enough in that first game i pulled a hip flexor mm -hmm. and then rehabbed got back and then two games later i've now pulled my left hamstring ouch so my mobility is limited in terms of you know getting out and running and doing some of those things but i can get around perfectly fine just so, so you know yeah walking is fine but any <laughs> no i'm just i'm i don't make assumptions i gotta ask so walking, walking is now fine <laughs> now <laughs> After, on sunday it was not so good sunday ouch. night is when the game was and the first few days of the week has been challenging all right no problem well Something How are you, Ed? How's your mobility? My mobility is fine, but first and foremost, the Dad Central Show is sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. Dove Men Plus Care believes that care is the best of a man, and when men care for themselves and others, there's a positive impact. So, my mobility is fine, actually. Uh, actually, you know what? Actually, a day or so ago, it wasn't too good because... I, I do I have some sort of muscle tightness in the lower part of my back on the right hand side. So I have a, a, a little portable electronic machine that loosens up muscles and simulates. And I do a lot of stretching and back exercises and I'm getting back into working out two or three times a week, which is very good. So mobility uh, physically and emotionally is not too bad right now. So we're okay. We're That's okay. Great. I, but I've experienced, I, I've experienced a pulled hamstring. Not fun. Not, not, not fun because there were days I used to play baseball and I remember pulling a hamstring and you wait, you wait and you, you go out and field and you do a run and, oh, and it's like, oh, it's like, I can't move. And it, it's a terrible, for me, I remember it because it's like a snap or just a, like a hard and just going, wow, that initial pain is not fun and the, the tightness around it. I feel your pain. Well, it's interesting you talked about the emotional mobility. Uh, so what I find is, as somebody who's, you know, I, I played competitive sports, played at a pretty high level, not professional, but you know, pretty close, and tried to maintain my physical health throughout the most of my life. When I was 34, unfortunately, I ruptured my Achilles, had to have surgically repaired. Uh, I chose to have it surgically repaired because I, I wanted to still be, you know, active the rest of my life. And since then, I've, you know, I've kind of regained and even increased some of my physical capabilities. But it's emotionally hard to go from this place of, you know, when I'm competitive, playing a sport, 
my mind says you go all out physically my body has definitely not been training at the same level of intensity as it was back then but my mind somehow uh still thinks it can do it and so that's the challenge in terms of the emotional ability in terms of the adjust okay so how do you play sports competitively but not go all out at at this uh, as i grow older I'm not old, uh, but as I grow older and my body ages, uh, and so I think it's a, an interesting point you bring up in terms of emotional will. How do I shift that? But then also now having these injuries, which as a, an athlete back in the day, you know, the hardest part of, um, I think, uh, the sport was actually not being able to play it through injury. I was fortunate. I only missed one game in five years of football um, because of injury. I had lots of smaller injuries, but none of them kept me out. I could still, still compete. So that's a hard part in terms of not contributing or not playing is, is a hard one. Um, just in terms of that emotional mobility and have, when you think about now, my life is very different outside of, uh, outside of, um, you know, the sport and injury. So when I have an injury now, I, I still have work. I still have a family. In fact, a pretty demanding family, right? Five kids. Uh, and then of course, there's the ongoing situation that, that I'd been experiencing with my ex-wife, which was you know heading toward a significant trial and the emotional bandwidth and energy that was required to, to be able to do that. So Kristen very wisely said to me, you know, Drew, you think you got a lot on your plate now that's contributing and may be a, a, a factor in you having these muscle strains at this stage. So some of that mental emotional bandwidth, how it all connects um, can be challenging. Absolutely. I just acknowledge that. Yeah, that, absolutely. So that's good banter that leads into our conversation today. It is while we're recording this in June, 2024, it's men's health month. So Drew and I said, you know, why don't we have a conversation about men's health and the importance of men health and also to dads, fathers, male caregivers and to their families. So that's what we landed on today. We're, we're bantering, but we get a little bit more for, you know, focus since also the month of father's day. So with, when we kick off this conversation, Drew, what, where do you start? Where do you, where do you take off on this conversation topic? Well, you and I were discussing before and the way that my mind looks at it to, to try and categorize and simplify it was, you know, we have our internal health uh, and then we have our, you could say, external health. That's what, that's what you sh shared. And so I thought a little bit deeper. I said, well, what is that? Uh, in my internal health, well, I, I could say it's my mental health, my emotional health, obviously my physical health, like internally, but then also, you know, spiritually like so mental emotional spiritual physical health is internal but then external health like what are those and of course this isn't you know based on some scientific model or anything it's just practically as a dad what does that look like for me i was thinking about well what about my my purpose or more of a, more of a, my vocation externally significant part of of me what about socially you know, so do I have friends, family? Uh, do I feel connected to my community? Uh, and then also externally, I think about, well, what about leisure or recreation? Uh, ways that I can recharge or rest or gain some form of satisfaction of the other ways that I'm spending my time outside of family uh, and my, my career. Uh, is there more to my life than just work and home, work and home, work and home, right? Is there more? And I, I I think there should be more, and I think it adds um, um, a lot to our health externally. So that's kind of where I landed when we were looking at health, uh, both internally and externally. How about you? What comes up for you when you think about uh, Well, health? I think one of the things, and I don't know if a lot of dads, fathers, male kivers, men, I look at it one of the ways of health is a gift, Right. When you have good health, it is a gift. When you don't have good health, it's not a gift. And not only looking at the, you know, you said internal, external, mental, spiritual, emotional, but not only how that impacts you, but how it impacts your family and others that you come in contact with. I don't know a lot, you know, everyone thinks, well, I'm in good health, but how does that impact your family, dad? How does that impact the people you come in contact with? on a regular basis and just making sure you, you do a checkup and not just, you know, again, the whole thing that how many men go to the doctor on a regular basis and, 
you know, people get tired of me saying it. I go to my doctor every two or three months, not because I need to, but my health is important to me. And I think that we need to realize even more so now how the term, you hear the term so much self-care has become, especially since during and post pandemic has become a term you hear so much, you know, yes, it's men's health month, but what are men, dads and fathers doing for their health? You know, it's really, really important. And, and breaking that stigma saying, oh, I'm always okay. You know, w- very few times we're perfect in this journey called life. And just being able to realize, you know, I've got to take myself seriously because, you know, if I'm a dad, male caregiver, I'm probably not going to live out my children. So suggestion, dad, why don't you set up whether it's, you know, in the areas of mental, physical, emotional, spiritually, set yourself up the best you can in those areas because you also are having impact as a person in all those children's lives. That's who they're looking at first. That's who they see the most. And a lot of times they're going to replicate what you've done. They'll replicate it and amplify it. So that's yeah. where I'm coming from a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, the way that you share uh, about that that perspective um, really sparked a couple different thoughts for me. Um, and really the the impact on those around us of our health and um do we consciously think about that uh, are we are we consciously aware and you know we we talk a lot in this show about being very intentional um but that awareness of you know when i'm not intentional with my health uh, how that's being perceived uh, and how it's impacting those around me versus when i am intentional how is it being um perceived and and how what type of impact is it having and You've shared previously on the show about, you know, your father, that's a story you shared about where your father had to go in for heart surgery and, and the impact just that experience had on you and um, the importance of, of, of that. So, uh, yeah, that's not something that I often think about um, as far as how is my health and my health journey impacting everyone else around me. So but yeah. that's important. Yeah, because if you are a dad, you know it's it's bigger than you. It's mm-hmm. it's you know it's really bigger than you, and you've got to really. I say, I say, take a check up from the neck up, but also take a check up in the neck down. But I think check up from the neck up first to just say, you know what, I got to realize this, and you know I'm not going to be around forever, and you know how can. I be the best in all those areas, the healthiest in all those areas that you shared a little bit er earlier on for my kids and my family, you know, Mm -hmm. setting up that actually almost like generational health. Mm -hmm. Here's the term, generational health, how you can set up the best health in all those areas, making and being intentional about it, you know, and also teaching. And I don't know how many dads do this, but I'm just throwing out how many dads out there either engage in healthy activities with a kid and how many dads engage about healthy eating and practices and nutrition practices with their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well said. A couple of thoughts come to mind or quotes, you know, much more is caught than taught. You hear that often said and means dads, our children, our partners, you know, our family are are watching us, whether whether we realize it or not. And so to your point of, are we teaching? Well, are we teaching through our own example? Uh, are we living out healthy mindsets? Are we living out healthy practices, healthy habits, a healthy, you know, healthy eating um, in front of our family, uh, as well as then talking about it uh, and sharing the benefits or the, all those other things? Yeah, absolutely important. The other thing that came to mind was when we did our recent podcast with Scott Donnell, and he talked about leaving our children a heritage not just an inheritance. You know, I know the conversation is really focused on you know, financial literacy, but this idea of heritage, you know, a health heritage, it can also be transmitted as opposed to a you know, a healthy inheritance is great, but a healthy a heritage of health, I think is could be quite impactful. And that's an amazing idea of a legacy that you you described there. 
think that one of the quite actually hosted a conversation this morning and I asked the two fathers, what legacy do you want to leave your kids? And it was interesting because when they asked that, either they hadn't been asked that before or they hadn't been asked that in a while and they paused for a good 30 seconds before they answered on that. So, you know, I just want to entail in like what healthy legacy are you leaving for your children, dads, fathers and male caregivers, not only in the health, but, you know, nutrition, emotional, spiritual, financial, that's all part of the makeup. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah, it's, it's a serious subject and it's one that we all, you know, who all are in this space, we have to really take seriously because it's, it's challenging more than ever for dads, fathers, and male care caregivers out there. It's not easy. And it also, it leans into another area of when I think about, I, I look at people in areas, three areas, health, wealth, and relationships. Health, wealth, and relationships. So especially in the area, and Drew really drives this home a lot about having that community of dads is part will help you have health in a lot of different areas, but having that healthy relationship with, you know, if you're raising child or children on your own, do you have that support? And if you're raising with a partner, you still need that community. Are you a dad who feels like you're juggling a million things at once? Balancing work, family, and personal goals can be overwhelming. But what if there was a solution? That's why we created our new fatherhood community called Dad Mentor. For over 20 years, Dad Central has built practical tools to help dads. We understand the challenges you face and provide the support you need to thrive. The biggest complaint we hear from dads is there's no dedicated support for their specific needs, but not anymore. Our new community called Dad Mentor is here to transform your fatherhood experience. Imagine feeling in control, staying calm and patient when your children misbehave. Picture yourself connected to your children, guiding them with confidence and watching them succeed. When you join Dad Mentor, you'll have access to a community of like-minded dads committed to their dad journey, just like you. You'll also get the Dad's Roadmap. This is a step-by-step -step plan to help you go from unsure to unstoppable as a dad. Monthly masterclasses and Q&A sessions. You'll get answers and know exactly what to do straight from experts. Monthly group meetups that connect dads over common topics. A dad's resource library. Curated webinars, podcasts, or guides built by Dad Central to help you grow as a parent. And finally, you'll also get exclusive members-only offers and events. Now, many dads do try to do this father thing alone, only to find themselves trapped in frustration and strained relationships. Then they may turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms like drugs, alcohol, or other distractions, leaving their family and their own well-being at risk. We don't want you to reach that point of regret. Take steps to invest in you and your family today. Join Dad Mentor and go from stressed, tired, and overwhelmed to confident, calm, and connected. Join us today by going to dadcentral.ca forward slash dads. Well, I've been curious, Ed. When I talked about you know, internal, external health and um, you know, gave a couple of the areas that stood out to me, there are barriers or challenges and you just identified, you know, the, the challenges. So uh, I'm going to ask you to get maybe a little personal here. You know, when you look back on, you know, your, your recent history of your life, what's been the greatest challenge to maintaining your health? Consistency. Consistency and, uh, distractions when i do it i feel great when i don't do it i know i should be getting back to it and sometimes getting that kickstart back so i've you know for a little period of time I was fighting a battle to get back exercising but when i do it it feels fantastic when i look at my watch and see how many calories i burned i say yes and just doing a consistency and and you know i've got enough equipment here to do it i don't have to do i don't have to go out and do it so being consistent and being pri 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 priority and realizing that when I do it, it not only benefits me, but it benefits those through me. Mm -hmm. And so was there anything that was uh, getting in the way of your ability to be consistent that you've identified? And, oh, and yeah. Like, how have you oh, worked yeah. through that? 
how, how I've worked through it is that don't think about what happens when I don't do it, but what happens when I do do it. And also don't think about, think about also who wins when I do it. So going a little bit beyond yourself. Right? Absolutely. So yes, you know, shifting a mindset of, okay, rather than focusing on the negative, oh man, I'm, you know, and, and then maybe even beating yourself up, oh, I screwed up again, I didn't get it done. You shift to this uh, mindset of, look what happens when I do it. Look what I have to gain. Yeah, look at the benefit, look take, at the success. I take, some, I take some of the best showers after I work out. <laughs> Small rewards, right? Okay. It's a huge, no, it's after a huge this, after I work too. hard. <laughs> I, tell you, I love my showers, true. I get this benefit. But then yeah. taking it to the next level of now that I've done that, look who else benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You know, it's, I think that, and I think this also mirrors on the whole of procrastination. Right. And a lot of people and my main mentor taught me this, that, you know, who doesn't procrastinate? <laughs> Most people are going to put their hands up. So first of all, you got to take that off saying, no, I'm not the only one. So it's mm -hmm. not all on your shoulders. And then he said to me, you know, don't think about um, what happens when you do, when you're not doing it. Think about what happens when you do do it. Mm -hmm. That mindset. And then also don't think about. I'm going to win when I do it. It's who else wins when you do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that the, my, and I think also combining discipline, right? The uh, people who have ex achieved a lot in life, most of the times it is discipline. That's like, really, you, you look at their discipline. Cause again, we look at the end result, but we don't look what it's taken for them to get to that end result. Most people just look at the end prize, but if they look at what that person went through, they ain't going to do that. But they said, okay, that's good. I just want the end prize. So again, it comes to that, you know, relating back to the health thing, you know, focus, discipline, you know, yeah, everyone has that challenge. But the thing mm -hmm. is, when you, you you pay attention to your health in the different areas that we've shared today, you know, I, you know, that's fantastic. That's great. And it's bigger than you. So You'll feel great, and then you're going to probably inspire directly or indirectly your family, your kids, and others that you come in contact with to be greater, too, because you're going to be a positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'll add one, one, two, one idea to that, and it comes from, you guess, Mr. John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And he tells the story about the rule of five. And so what is the rule of five? He says, well, imagine this. You have a tree in your backyard and you've got an ax and you go out to this tree and every day you take the ax and you swing and you hit the tree five times. Not 50, not 500. You know, you just take it every single day. You go out five swings, put the ax down, go back in. What's going to eventually happen to that tree? It's going to fall down. 100% fall apart. And so yeah. the, this idea of consistency and consistency compounding is really crucial. The why I think the, the rule of five is so powerful, it, two things. One, it shows only five swings of the X, and I'm going to knock a tree down. You know, if you have a, a, a tree of, you know, health that you're, you're like, I've got this mighty oak in front of me in terms of what I've got to, you know, cut down in terms of improving my health. You don't need to chop it all down at once. You need five swings a day. And that five swings a day might start with one thing. And that one thing might be going to bed an hour and a half earlier and not having your devices in front of your face right for the last half hour before you go to bed. That might be your one thing that is essentially you taking five swings a day. So start with that. And then once you've got that down, then you move to the next. So it's it's everything is achievable if you just consistently work at it day by day, right? So that, that's the one thing. But also this idea of identifying what are the most important factors. So when you're swinging the five times, what is it? So if let's say it's, let's say heart condition, I happen to have cardiovascular heart disease because of genetics. So when I think about it every day, I have a choice and put what I put in my mouth. Do I take the carrot sticks, celery sticks, and cucumbers, and do I crunch on those as my snack? 
or do I go for the chips? And how how often? And so like one simple change. So you know what? Today I'm not going to go for the chips. I'm going to go for the you know. And how do what do I do? I have them ready and available. I just grab. So one simple change, repeated over and over and over and over, can actually add up to significant gains down the road. And it's just identifying what is that one thing. And I, again, I encourage people when it comes to making change, identify one thing that's going to be most impactful, but also is most doable for you. Like it's doable for me to switch out chips for, you know, carrot sticks. The other thing that's doable is not to buy the chips in the first place. So those are all doable and they're not insurmountable. And I do those consistently over time, a year from now, two years from now. I go to the doctor and I get my cholesterol check. Guess what? Hey, it's very different than if I made that one simple change. So I don't know. I just share the real five. I think it's very powerful because of its simplicity, but also the results of when you compound, you know, consistency compounds, as they say, right? Yeah, I'll piggyback on what you said about I this is just take one step. <laughs> really. Don't make it complicated. Uh I, I've shared. You know, Drew is a very big fan of John Maxwell and Periolki. I will share, you know, I had the opportunity to meet him many years ago. And uh, it was just funny because the way it happened, it probably would not happen today. But uh, I had that opportunity to meet him. And we, I sat down with him and just him and I at a table. And I said, you know, you've written all those books, like so many leadership books, you know, world renowned, etc. And I asked John. How did you get started? I was expecting some big, long John Maxwell r- response. And he said, I just started. So encouraging fathers, dads, male caregivers, men out there, when it comes to your health, just start. Just start. Just, just take a step. Experiment. There's nothing wrong with experimenting. Because at least you know if it works, great. If it doesn't, at least you know it doesn't work and you can move on to something else. And that experimenting is just not for you. It's for your family and for your kids. So realize that you're you're moving in the right direction is going to have impact on others. And when you don't move, it has impact on others too. So, you know, as many years ago, they had that company starter and they had a great t-shirt line with slogans. And one of their slogans says, it all starts with you. It all starts with you. So uh, when it comes to your health, everyone is watching or listening. It all starts with you. Yeah. Uh, Before we uh, end off today, I I wanted to throw one additional thought in there for dads. And it actually relates to this idea of, you know, external health that we were talking about. And it really, I think relates to our our career or our our profession or or just our work that we do because work takes up a lot of our lives. If you're, you know, if you are engaged in in working full time or part time, and not, you know, in the business of being at home and being a full time parent, work is significant, uh, and it it comes from you know, working with dads and and hearing them. And one of a recent coaching clients, um, you know, discussions that we've been having over the past year, he's, I'd say, struggled with the career aspect in because he hasn't felt fulfilled and what he's realized through the coaching process is how that lack of fulfillment in his career or the work that he's doing has really significantly impacted the rest of his life he didn't and he wasn't realizing how much and so i think that's common though that we can get into ruts you know, whether when it comes to the work we're doing or how we're doing it, we can get into comfort zones, we can get into, you know, all these different scenarios. But I, I think it was uh, important to, for him, and, I, and I, it's caused me to reflect as well, you know, am I feeling fulfilled in the work I'm doing? And if I'm not, how is that impacting my overall life and, and health? Because truthfully, when you think of mental and emotional health, if you wake up every day thinking, "Oh man, here's a grind. Um, uh, this is this isn't going to be valuable for me," or, or uh, you have to really gut through it, you're not really living your best life. You're not really living as healthy as you can. And so there are many ways and ways to move forward. But uh, I think it 
using the idea of what's one thing, is there one thing you can do with your work that can move you closer to fulfillment or feeling challenged? Because I believe that's one of the other things is you know, we need to be challenged. We need to be outside of our comfort zone. Maybe we need to be held accountable, whatever it is. You know, uh, the question I'd say, and use this, what's the one question and what's the one action? The question you know, a dad might be asking himself, am I truly giving my best to the work that I'm doing now? And if you're not, what's one step you could take to be giving more of your best to that? Because I think just giving your best, there's something that comes from that that says you can at least be satisfied i've given my best even if the outcome or even if the the recognition isn't there for that at least i've known i've done my best and here's what happens you grow in the process and that i think can lead to greater fulfillment down the road so i think it's an important point not to be missed or forgotten that you know how are you spending your working hours or contribution hours to whatever it is that is and are you giving your best and then if not identify one way that you can feel more energized more fulfilled more activated more challenged and go make that happen excellent end off i'll just add something really really quick to what drew has just shared we always hear about passion and purpose I don't mind dads, fathers, male carriers. I don't mind. And I want you to have a passion and a purpose. The key thing, is it aligned with who you are? So on that last note, the Dad Central Show is sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. Dove Men Plus Care believes that care is the best of a man because when men care for themselves and others, there's a positive impact. If you want to touch base with us, email-wise, podcast at dadcentral.ca. And we have something coming up very soon that we want you to really work that email address. But at this present time, give us feedback, any guest suggestions. We'd love to hear them. You can listen to the show or watch the show at dadcentral.ca forward slash podcast. And finally, lots of free resources on the dadcentral.ca website. So as always, thank you so much for taking time. The most important thing you have in your life to either listen or watch the show. And as always, don't just manage your time, manage your energy. Remember to give yourself grace and be well and keep the faith.